Hi guys and girls, some of you have been asking if I do a new video. It's just coming up to nine months, it's sort of next few weeks. It'll be nine months since I had my hair transplant. I'll just quickly go over the top like I normally do so you can see it. I'm in a different room today, so hopefully it's light enough for you to see everything. It's kind of gone a bit wavy. Washed it yesterday, been at work today, just got back, cut it on the sides and the back, um, I think last week or the week before. I've been sort of thinking of what video to do really, and I'll try and link it into all the questions that I get asked, because I get asked quite a few questions, either in the comments section or on Instagram Messenger and stuff like that. So I thought I'd do like a general overview of the basics of going for a hair transplant. So first of all, if you're balding and you want a hair transplant, that's what you've got to decide is, are you going to have one? Um, and a lot of guys will, you know, understandably be, and girls, quite frightened of getting one done because it's the unknown, it's, you know, it's a scary thing paying to have something done. So the first thing you've got to decide is, do you definitely want it done? When you decided that, you try not to think about it too much. If you've decided you're gonna get it done, then that's it, go for it. Next thing you've got to decide is, where do you get it done? I'm from England. I can't afford to get it done in England. And now that I've had it done in Turkey, even if I had the money to do it in England, if I needed a second op, I'd still go back to Turkey. The main reason for this is just the amount of experience they have. Literally, they're doing this day in, day out. They've got a lot of experience. You should sort of try and study a little bit and find out what clinic you want. You know, it's in your price range. For me, at the time, I didn't really know that much about it, but I'd seen some sites on Facebook, and from that, I I saw some guys that got really good results. They were literally bald, and they had great results. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go to the clinic they went to, which is what I did. So then, once you've decided on the clinic that you want, one thing I'd suggest is just stop reading reviews, stop reading so much into it because you'll put yourself off and you'll end up cancelling. I know guys that have booked and then cancelled. It's just one of those things, You once you've booked it and you've decided on that clinic, stick with it, go ahead. There's always gonna be some people that aren't happy with one or they're happy with another. You know, and you're going to end up talking yourself out of it. So once you've decided and you've booked, then just go ahead and just wait for it. I booked in the April of last year and I had the operation in December. You can book up to a year in advance at most places and then you pay on the day, which is great. But obviously that's quite a lot of thinking time. So yes, you're at home thinking, oh, to be honest, I didn't really think too much of it. I just kept in the back of my mind, yeah, I'm going in December, make sure I've got enough money. It gave me a chance to save up the money for it. And that's another thing, you know, some places are cheaper than others. Just, you've got to find a, a place that's in your price range and that you're, you're gonna be happy with. I probably should have done more research. When I first started looking, there wasn't as much on Facebook or on the internet as what there is now. Now there's quite a few sites, great sites for helping each other, for, uh, there's more YouTube videos, there's more everything really, so it's a little bit easier now. Because I have to be honest, two, three years ago, if someone said go to Turkey for an operation and pay for it, I'd be thinking, yeah, that's not gonna happen. But like I said, I'm more than happy I did now. So yeah, you book it, you, most of the clinics in Turkey, you get a package. So you get your hotel is included and you usually like a four or five star hotel. Your transfers from the airport and from the hotel up to the surgery, the hospital and back and back to the airport and the aftercare appointment. The transfers for that are all included. Your operations obviously included. Everything is basically included apart from your flights. You got 
depending where you live, you just got to book your flights. I flew out on a Sunday afternoon, arrived sort of in the evening. There was a taxi, picked me up, took me to the hotel. I took my girlfriend. That, again, is another thing if you want to take a friend or a partner, you can pay extra. All you do is basically paying for their breakfast in the hotel. It's not that much more. We paid 10 euros per night more. So we would, she stayed at the hotel and used the gym and the swimming pool. People say, can they come into the room with you when you're having the operation? I don't know about other hospitals, but where I went, no, you literally, the room was quite small. You had to have it, you know, there was only enough room for the two technicians or the doctor. So yeah, there wasn't enough room for somebody else to be in there as well watching. So <clears throat> yeah, you, you buy your package, various prices. I paid 1,990 euros. This included everything apart from the flights. My flights was £139 from Heathrow, and that was last December. Book your flights as far in advance. I'd advise using Kayak or Skyscanner to get cheap flights. One thing to bear in mind is coming home, if you've got the liquids, the shampoos they give you, you're going to need um, hold luggage. If you put it in your hand luggage and security checks it, they'll just chuck it in the bin so you, you've lost it. So you. You know, my advice would be to book hold luggage on the way home. You don't need a massive suitcase. I only took a small case with a change of clothes and stuff and to put the stuff in on the way back. Then I just put in the hold on the way back. On the, when the day arrives, go to the airport, obviously. Make sure you get to the airport in time. Park your car or if you're taking public transport, go into the airport, take your flight. When you get out there, you all have had instructions. I had to go to a Vodafone stand and behind that there was a little travel office. You go in there, they took a copy of your passport, they sent that onto the hospital to let them know that you'd arrived. They got the transport for me, the, I think it was a Mercedes van, took us up to the hotel, checked into the hotel. They sort of know it's all been paid for. And then, yeah, they tell you when breakfast is the next day. Breakfast was included. The only thing that wasn't included was like an evening meal and lunch was provided when I had the operation. So the hospital um, doctors, they, I had like a, a sandwich and a drink it was for about 15 minutes. So everything was provided apart from the evening meal. So the next day you wake up, you have your breakfast, which you have to have pretty early because depending on if you're on an early or a late um, sitting for the operation, in my case, I think it picked me up about eight o'clock. I'll let you watch my first video, which I'll link to, because that literally goes into mega detail on every little aspect of the operation. Okay, so you go, you have your operation, come back. Mine was got there in the morning. When you get to the hospital, I'll briefly go over it. They wet your hair, take photos of your hair with like different angles, the bald spots, um, how far you've receded, that sort of thing, <clears throat> to get pictures. They also take a blood test because they check you for HIV and a few other things. I think if you've got HIV or I think it was hepatitis or anything like that, then they won't do the operation. But they do the blood test. The other reason they do the blood test is they take blood so that they can re-inject it into your, your head. Uh, for the PRP session, which is where they re-inject, the, they separate, I think it's the plasma, and re-inject it into your scalp, which is supposed to help the healing process. So that's another reason why they take the blood. After that, you go upstairs or wherever the doctor's room was, mine was at the top of the hospital, and then you pay. I paid on credit card, because I've got a special travel credit card. Bear in mind that you'll probably be paying in euros, not Turkish lira. So you can either carry the cash. Some hospitals give a reduction, like 50 euros off, I think, for paying in cash. Mine didn't, so I paid on my travel credit card. I took two just in case one didn't work. But I think I've got a Halifax Clarity card, which gives you a really good exchange rate and it doesn't charge you foreign transactions fees. Be careful of that. Some charge like up to 2.99%, so you'll be paying that extra on top. So you don't really want that. So I have to pay on um, debit card or cash if your credit card doesn't provide this service or take out a credit card before you go. One of the good travel ones, Martin Lewis's moneysavingexpert.com or .co.uk, wherever it is, that gives you great 
travel credit cards, so check that out if you need to get a new credit card. This, of course, is from a UK perspective. I don't know what other countries' credit cards are like, so I can't comment. So you have your operation done. Like I said, check out my first video. That goes into massive detail for about an hour of how exactly what happens. So yeah, you have your operation done. Go back to the hotel, have a bit of dinner. I was worried, like, because I had a thing around my beard area because they're taking beard grafts from under there and obviously the bandages, they put bandages around the back of your head. I was worrying, worried about going into the hotel, restaurant looking like that, but they said it's fine, you know, loads of guys going like that all the time, so don't worry. So I had my dinner, went to bed that evening, they give you a sleeping pill, I was knackered anyway. I actually slept pretty good, and then next day got up, they then, you have your breakfast again, they then took me to the, the taxi picked me up, took me up to the hospital again, I then, they then go through, was everything okay? And the doctor sort of does an inspection of your head, make sure everything's fine. In my case, they're all good. They also then give you one of these, which is the headband. The reason they do this is when you have your hair done, the scalp really swells up. They inject it with a lot of stuff to swell it up. This makes it bigger so they can sort of in, um, put the graphs in more accurately and obviously it stops you getting the pain because they've injected the anaesthetic but this swells so you your head's like that for a good few days they told me to keep this on for like two nights i personally left it on for about five because it's winter and it kept my ears warm it was pretty nice and i didn't want the swelling going down to your eyes it looks like you've got black eyes if you don't wear one of those and the swelling moves down to your eyes so that's why I didn't take mine off for like five days and five nights. I just left it on. It does feel quite like, feels like a lot, a bit of pressure in your head because of the swelling. But yeah, wore that for a, a good few days and yeah, finally took it off. Then what happens is you have your aftercare. Some of them, I think, do a, the first hair wash with you. In my case, I think now in the operation they do you get uh, three nights in a hotel, so I think you go back the next day and they do your first hair wash, go through it with you. So you have to make sure you book your, your flight home for the afternoon or evening, and you have to tell them that so they can plan um, when they see you. I had mine, it, when I had mine done, it was just two nights, so the first hair wash, they basically go through and tell you, and also in the aftercare, they sell packs, a uh, six month supply of pills, you can buy this if you want, but you don't have to. I bought a few bottles of saw palmetto and multivitamins because I'd run out at home. But I bought all this stuff on Amazon and it's cheaper, so I didn't bother buying a six month pack. Yeah, after that, you go back, depending on time, if you've got time, you, they might send you back to the hotel, or if not, they will take you straight back to the airport. If you're going straight to the airport, make sure you've got your luggage with you, obviously. In my case, I went back to the hotel, checked out, and then I was just sat around for a few hours. Then they picked us up and took us back to the airport. Flew back home. This was the, another question I get asked tons. You, can you wear a hat straight away? No, you can't wear a baseball cap or a hat because you know the grafts are still quite fresh in there. It's, I think it takes up to 10 days for them to sort of completely take. You don't want to mess around with your head up to then them coming out what they do give you is this lovely hat so you put it on because it's quite tall it doesn't touch the top of your head so it's kind of like a fisherman's type hat so yeah you you have that i kept mine as a little souvenir and what they do is i didn't even need to wear that on the way home i just kept the headband on People get so hit up about the airport, what are people going to think, you know, don't worry about that. Everyone, there's so many people that have had nose jobs, hair jobs, you know, just don't worry about it. No one looks twice, no one bats an eyelid at you. I just had my headband on, wore that, didn't bother wearing the hat until I got back to Heathrow, got out of the terminal and it was bucketing down with rain and it was quite windy so I put the hat on just to stop the hair getting soaking wet. I mean, the hair's wet anyway, because they're spraying your scalp. When they're in, uh, putting the uh, grafts into your head, they're con constantly spraying it to keep it sort of moist. So you're 
on your aftercare, they'll give you complete instructions and they will give you, if, even if you don't buy the extra package, they'll give you a shampoo or two and they'll give you a special sort of solution that you put on before the shampoo for the first week, I think it was. That's just like really, it's like baby shampoo kind of thing. Some of it's foam, but I didn't get foam on, it was more of a solution. So you put that on. The first wash is really sort of nerve-wracking. If they can do it, then it's cool if they show you how to do it. They showed me how to do it, but they didn't actually do my first wash. So I had to do my first wash when I got home. And it's a bit nerve-wracking. You have to literally get a, like a pint glass or something like that, or a jug, and just like warm water just pour over your head so it's not, you don't want any pressure or you don't want to go under a shower or something like that. So you do that, <clears throat> and then you'll start getting scabs. My place told me that by the 10th or on the 10th wash, they wanted the scabs gone. So they, you'll start getting scabs where they put them in. And these kind of, they're weird. When they get wet, when you've done your hair wash, it, it looks like little white balls. Like they're really, it's like kind of like white caviar that's on the top of your head. It's, they're just really weird looking. So you get those, they're like little balls. And eventually they do come off. Some will be more stubborn than others. And you'll get a feel for it. So buy wash 10 in my case and that's another point follow exactly what your clinic says you know mine might be slightly different some allow you some just leave the scabs on for ages mine wanted them off by 10 days um, I think it's to stop the hairs in growing or something like that so yeah you want to I, I finally got them off by day 10 there was one that was kind of a bit stubborn so you have you kind of get you kind of just kind of gently rub it and it, it eventually just came off but it is very nerve-wracking because you're thinking i've paid all that money i don't want to lose my graphs or whatever so yeah that's the whole process basically and then people are like well you've gone all the way out there what happens if something goes wrong you know what happens when you get home and if you get home and you've got a problem then go visit your doctor but the clinics in turkey you know they give you a whatsapp number you can just video message them or just send them a WhatsApp um, and if you've got any questions they, they get back to you straight away they're really good once you've decided to go don't keep put, putting it off or you know if you've got the money and you want it done then go for it, it would be my advice because if you choose a reputable place so some of the questions I get are you know are they going to be butchering you no <laughs> it's it, I, I know what it's like and when you're sort of thinking about it, it's easy to get nervous. It's only natural to be nervous. The day you are driving up to the hospital, you will be crapping yourself. You'll be, you know, people who say they're not are just lying. You will be nervous. You you know, there's two other, I think two or three other guys, these Spanish guys, and they didn't speak much English, and I don't speak Spanish, but we could tell we were very nervous, to put it um, politely. So. But, you know, you're all in the same boat and we're, you're kind of nervous, but you're kind of excited because you're thinking, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I want to get it done. I want to see the results. So try not to let it put you off. And yeah, the people saying, you know, do they butcher you? No, they don't butcher you. If you fall over and you cut your knee, it heals, doesn't it? You're not cutting your, your bone in half or anything like that or going through veins or anything like that. So... Your scalp is pretty strong. You, you've got your um, skull. They don't go into the skull. It's not like brain surgery. They're not breaking your skull open. So the needles, that, that is probably why it hurts so much be because the um, it's not fleshy, your skull. You know, it, it's, it's quite sort of solid. Your, your scalp um, with your skull underneath. So they, they go, uh, they don't basically go into the skull. So don't worry about that. They're not breaking your skull or anything. They're just... They just inject the needles and yeah i say it's painful it's it's more of a sting than a pain and once you've got the first one or two out of the way that's it you don't feel it they give you a pill as well which is really strong which makes you kind of a bit drowsy so you know some people say it's the worst pain ever and some people say it's not that bad at all i didn't find it that bad at all um and funnily enough, a lot of guys who've been to the clinic I went to have said the same. They don't find it that painful. You can have this thing called painless anaesthetic. And a lot of guys are still getting really muddled up with that. It's not instead of the needles. You have the painless 
each time they're going to do a needle, they kind of, it's like, a, I call it a stun gun. And it's just like a little thing and it just clicks. And it basically just sort of stuns the skin. Then they come with the needle and inject. And they just say, you know, sort of pain or whatever. And if it's hurting too much, you can tell them. You, you know, some, that is the main thing that was worrying me. And I think that worries a lot of people. If that is the only thing that's worrying you, then just don't let it worry you. It's a really bad comparison, but women have kids and it's very, very painful for them. But they have kids, again, like a second or a third kid. And it's like a hair transplant. It's, yeah, it's uncomfortable, especially to begin with. After a while, you're just used to it. And yeah, the next needle, you don't feel. I think it's because the, the anaesthetic kind of spreads and then spreads. So when they, when they do the next needle, it's kind of already a little bit numb so yeah you just don't feel it after a while yeah it's like like that like i would go back for a second one if i needed to it's not that yours you know if it was that bad then i certainly wouldn't go back for a second one if the pain was that bad but i really didn't think it was at all but then so you've had your op done getting back to my story you then some guys take what's called finasteride I give blood, they don't allow me to give blood if I've taken finasteride and you know I take it quite seriously. I'm trying to get to 100 donations, well over 50 now um, donations so I'm pretty happy so I'm not taking finasteride. Finasteride is to try and keep the hair you've got. People say why does the hair not fall out? Your existing hair that was on top if you had some can fall out, can keep falling out. Your your hair that they take, they take it from the sides and the back, up the top. They don't take it down here or, or round that bit. So that's called, it's more DHT resistant. So it doesn't, it, it, it's basically resisting, resistant to the baldness. What causes like the testosterone, the DHT to, that shrinks the grafts in your head that's sort of on top where you're going bald on the bald spot on the crown or wherever so you that starts that the hair basically on the sides and the back that they transplant is more resistant so it it shouldn't fall out that's why they put it on the top and you get guys sort of say you know i'm norwood five norwood six norwood seven you know am i suitable i didn't have a clue what norwood scale i was it's basically a scale of how bald you are I didn't have a clue and I still really don't now. I think I was around about five because I've looked at this chart, but I didn't ask anything like that. All I said to the doctor was, look, I'm, I've got a bald spot at the back. I'm quite thin on top and it's receding there, which I think are called the widow's peaks. And those bits on the sides are called temples. Some guys have those bits done. I said, you know, can you help? And they were confident they could, so I went ahead with it. Maybe I should have asked more questions, but like I said, there wasn't as much information around when I was booking mine. I was basically just trusting the years and years of experience that my doctor had. That's another thing. You get a lot of questions. Did the technicians do it or did the doctor do it? In where mine was, when I booked mine, the doctor did the incisions. That was the only package they have available. They've got a few available now, depending on which package you choose and how much you pay. You can have the technicians do everything and the doctor will just pop in a couple of times to supervise, make sure everything's fine. Or you can pay to have the doctor do the incisions. I paid, like I said, there was only one package available. So the technician, there was two of them, a guy and a girl. The guy basically was the one who shaved my head, took, I call the hair off, um, my original hair. And he started by doing the beard grafts under there, which you can see there's no scarring. I'm really happy with that. I think they took about 500 grafts. And he basically did the whole, started taking the, the grafts out from the sides and then moved around to the back and then down the other side. And when he was doing it, then a, a girl came in, she started like doing them as well. And then they sort them. Um, I think they use a microscope or something, I was kind of lying on the bed. It's like a massage kind of bed, that sort of thing. And it had a TV above it where they put music on and stuff like that. But they, they sort them, so in my case, they did that, had a quick bite to eat for lunch, then the doctor came in, he made the incisions, which basically they put a 
some gave your eyes because they shine a really bright light and you know you, you couldn't keep your eyes open for that and you can just feel them sort of just making the incisions little cuts i had 3300 grafts so it was quite a few incisions made they mostly started at the well they, they start at the front so you've got your hair new hairline that's a little bit lower than what it was before and then they work back and which was mine was probably more the middle and then the crown area what's left over that's why some guys need two ops because there's only a certain amount they can do in one session you know they have to get the grafts back into your head because you know otherwise they die if they leave them too long the other thing is people say oh could you use someone else's hair no you can't it has to be your hair i think they are working on something scientists you know trying to develop something with stem cells so they could grow your own hair that you could have implanted um, but I think that's a little way off at the moment. Yeah, so this is basically, the, you've had the op. Hopefully, within a few months, you should start seeing things grow. First of all, you can get what's called shock loss. So where you've had hair implanted, it kind of, some of your existing hair gets like shock um, and it, it falls out, but that should hopefully grow back. You also get what's called shedding, where they put the hair in but that can also fall out and then what grows after that should be sort of fine and stronger hair. I was quite lucky I didn't really get any shedding or any shock loss so I'm not sure if it's what cycle your hair's on at the time because your hair basically goes through cycles and everyone does have a little bit of hair loss even people with full nice thick hair they, it does come out occasionally. So yeah you you get a choice, like I said, I was talking about finasteride, then there's minoxidil, which is like Rogaine or Regain, I think it's, it's called Rogaine in the US and Regain in the UK, I think. You can choose to use that, my clinic said don't use it for like, I think six months, but I did start using it after three just to try and speed this, the crown up, because the crown, by the way, is the slowest part to grow, it takes a long time, it can take up to 18 months. Mine's gone quite well it's sort of thickened up a bit now I'm not taking minoxidil like I said I've never taken finasteride one thing my clinic recommended was you take saw palmetto uh, biotin and multivitamins so this is what I take I buy mine from Amazon and as always I'll leave a link below in the first comment which is my Amazon page so you can see exactly what I take you can also see the other things that I've tried or that I'm going to try, um, different shampoos and things like that. Shampoo wise, I just usually go for the cheapest now. I've had expensive stuff, I've had cheap stuff, I don't find that much difference. And yeah, I've been through a few different types of biotin and saw palmetto and I usually just go for which one's got good reviews and a good price. But I link them on to my Amazon page, which I'll link below. That's about it. So it's people say, you know, I, that's the whole point of having tra hair transplants so that I don't have to take pills. My clinic recommended for a year, so and they're not that expensive if you buy them on Amazon. So I'm gonna just keep taking mine for a year. They seem to be doing all right at the moment. They're um, they're they're kind of like herbal vitamins so it's not harming you taking them one thing the biotin i noticed my fingernails grow really quick so i think it speeds your hair growth up the saw palmetto is kind of like a herbal version of finasteride it's not been scientifically proven but a lot of people say you know take it because it's supposed to stop the hair falling out so like i said your hair once it's the hair that's been transplanted shouldn't fall out, but your existing hair that you had beforehand, if you had hair up on top, that can still fall out because it's not the same sort of DHT resistant hair that they you, that you got on the sides of the back. That's why you find guys normally are bald on top and the hair on the sides and the back is usually okay. Get guys though, like I was saying earlier, that different Norwood scales, you know, don't let that put you off. If if you're Norwood 7 or whatever, one thing you'll find is the UK clinic seems to give you a smaller um, like estimation of how many grafts they'll be able to get, whereas the Turkish clinic seems to give you a higher amount. Mine said between 3,000, or they said they'd get around about 3,000, and when I got out, this was from the photos that I sent to them. 
because they will ask you for photos to make sure that they think you're a suitable candidate. When I got out there, they said we, we got 3,300. Um, some of those were from the beer graphs under there. People say about the beer graphs, is it okay to use beer graphs? Mine, fine. They don't put them in the front, they put them round in the crown. And I think they're quite thick, the hair. You know, it's like beard hair. They can also use chest hair, but they didn't use any of my chest hair. So the beard hair, especially, I think is quite thick. So they use it to sort of thicken up the crown, which for me seems to work pretty well. Overall, am I happy with it? Yes, completely. But if you get any comments, leave them in the comments section below or um, go on to my Instagram page, which I link below. From there, you can then contact me via the Instagram messenger privately if you don't want your message in public. Overall, you know, it's brilliant, you know. Show you the hair. From what it was to what it is now, I'm mega happy with it. All right. I'll try and do another video soon um, when I reach the nine month mark. All right. Cheers. Bye. So yeah, no matter what Norwood scale you are, don't let that put you off because it, even if they can just do a front hairline and, and sort of like thinner hair sort of over the top and at the back, you could then use maybe hair fibers to sprinkle over and thicken it up. And even if you've got a hairline, isn't that gonna make you happier? You know, if you're looking at websites about hair transplant, you're obviously interested in hair transplants. So you have to be realistic, obviously. And if you're completely bald on top, you probably will need two operations. But you've got a way up in your mind. Is it worth it for me to have a hair transplant if, you know, it may be not complete thick hair at the end of it? And so you've got to say to yourself, would I be happier with a little bit more hair on top than what I've got now? But just keep your expectations sort of under control and you might be pleasantly surprised. I've seen guys that were really bald on top and they've got full thicker than my hair. My hair's pretty, you know, when I was younger, it's kind of real thick and it's kind of wavy and it was a bit annoying. I used to really want straight hair that was easier to sort of style and spike, you know, have spiky hairstyle, etc. But it's always been really kind of wavy and thick. Maybe that's helped out for the hair transplant, I don't know. But yeah, just don't be put off. If you get one, go to one clinic and they say, oh yeah, we don't think you're a suitable candidate, then go to another, get a second, third, fourth opinion. As long as you go to someone that's reputable and look up reviews, find a, a clinic that's got great reviews, but just don't become obsessed with those reviews because there's always going to be someone that's not had a great experience or wasn't quite as great as they'd expected. So don't be put off just because one clinic says you're not suitable. When I got there, I thought my hair's pretty thick on the sides and the back. I thought it'd be great, but the doctor said, no, your, your uh, donor area on the sides and back is pretty thin. So they wanted to use beard hair. And I said, yeah, you know, you're a doctor, you, you know this inside out, this stuff. I'll take your word for it and yeah I'm glad I did it doesn't hurt at all having your beard done you don't lose it. if I want to grow a beard I can still grow a thick beard without a few less grafts under there same as my hair on the sides and the back it's like I've got no little someone's saying you know you get white dots but you know that they have not over harvested mine so it's you know I've shaved it short again on the sides and the back to show you that it's it is still there. It's, it's, you can still have short haircuts if you want. You don't have to grow it long on the sides and the back just to sort of show that you've got hair and that there's no bits missing or anything. You sort of see the sides and the back. And I know some people are like really sort of nervous about that, but I think they did a really good job on mine. They didn't over harvest it. So by that, I mean, they didn't try and take too many grafts, which would leave bald spots on the sides and the back. But yeah, you can just sort of style it however you want now. You don't have to have it forward you, you, or back. You can just sort of do it however you want. So, but anyway, that's it for now. Any questions, give me a shout and I'll try and answer them. I'm pretty busy at the moment, you know, working and stuff, but, and I'm sort of in the gym in the evenings a lot of the time, but anytime just leave a message or leave a comment and I do try and get through most of them, if not all of them. Cheers, bye.